Why do I think cryptocurrency is so important? Within the next 10 years, the world will be completely cashless. In China, everything is WeChat and Alipay through a QR code. And in the West, you have Venmo, Cash App. It's not just payment. Financial services are also going digital. You might think this is convenient, but it sacrifices all your privacy. All the face-to-face -face untraceable cash transactions are no more. And this is where the digital versions of cash like Bitcoin comes in. All it takes is a software protocol and I can send you money globally, freely, and openly. Now to take advantage of this, we've seen Facebook Libra, a controlled cryptocurrency, and China has come out with their official state-backed cryptocurrency. In response, all the global financial powers will start to issue their own cryptocurrency. There's also blockchains like Ripple that allow you to track cross-border payments. So imagine you buy a weapon, and all of a sudden all your international accounts are banned. The only way we can defend our privacy is by educating ourselves on open cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. And that's why I make these videos. Why crypto will win. Every country on the planet now uses fiat currency. A success rate for fiat currency? Zero. Every single one of these is going to zero. This is a good example. The government in Venezuela printed a shit ton of currency. The value of your $100 bill on July 2014 is worth less than $1 now. So what did the Venezuelan people do when the government stole their purchase power? So this is the volume of transactions for each country. This is New Zealand. This is Norway. This is Denmark. This is Canada. This is the United States. And this is the UK. Notice the peak at the end of 2017 and the start of 2018 on almost every single chart. This is where Bitcoin hit 20k. This is Venezuela's weekly Bitcoin volume. You can't even see 2017 and 2018. That's because of the hyperinflation. A lot of people are buying crypto. They're dropping their fiat currency and buying Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. If you're a Minecraft fan, you can now mine Bitcoin within Minecraft. That's right, they've added a treasure hunt server, which allows players to mine Bitcoin within the game. I got a pickaxe and changed myself to survival, uh, and I mine this stuff here. Uh, you'll come to see that it is, in fact, Bitcoin ore. They've made the game a whole lot easier to run. Any kid could run this on anything that can take Java. But also adding Bitcoin to the game, this also sort of reels in a little bit more attention to Minecraft. Why mine Bitcoin when you can play Minecraft and mine Bitcoin in Minecraft? Some more cool links for you guys. This website is called Fiat Leak. Here are all the different currencies. We can see right now there's a lot of USD being used to purchase Bitcoin. Ask Keith or Nathan for the links. This is the Brave browser. Why is it better? It's got ad block built in and it blocks cross-site trackers from learning about your history. It's based on the Chromium browser, which is the open source version of Chrome. So you have all the Chrome features. Plus Brave also dug into the project itself to block Google from tracking you within the browser. All of this is funded by an opt-in feature to see ads run by the browser. You get 70% of what the advertisers pay and Brave gets 30%. The income in their cryptocurrency bat is typically around $5 per month. You can cash out these crypto directly from Brave's partner Uphold. Or you can use them to tip your favorite creator's website. It can be a YouTube or Twitch channel or blog or any site that the owner has registered with Brave. If you care about privacy and a fair model for ads, you should check it out. Bitcoin benefits number five, choose your own fees. There's no fee to receive Bitcoins. Only the sender pays a small fee. The current default fee is around 20 cents per transaction. Now you can choose to pay a higher fee for your transaction to go through faster. On the other hand, fees are completely unrelated to the amount transferred. So you can send 100,000 Bitcoins for the same fee that it costs to send one Bitcoin. Recently, a market whale sent over 44,000 Bitcoins worth over $300 million, and they only paid 30 two cents in fees. It likely would have cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars in traditional banking. Ethereum will outperform Bitcoin in the next bull run. Here's why. Ethereum is the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap. And for the last two years when we were in a bear market, the Ethereum ecosystem has seen a lot of development with new applications, way more than what we had in the 2017 bull market. 
You can see this in this adoption chart of DeFi. DeFi is the biggest usage of Ethereum. It stands for decentralized finance. Essentially, you lock up your crypto in some open smart contract that everybody can audit and you get interest or you can do loans in return. Now, by the end of 2017, which was the peak of the bull market where Ethereum and Bitcoin both reached all time highs, we only had $30 million worth of crypto locked into these smart contracts. But for the past two and a half years of the bear market, the DeFi space actually has seen a really big growth. And we're actually at $750 million worth of crypto locked up now. And here's the price of Ethereum for the past two years during the bear market. Most people were shaken out in this big volatility. And that's why I think right now it's very undervalued. This is how you can help your favorite creator go viral. Number one, watch their entire video. Number two, like their video. Number three, post a comment. Number four, follow them if you're not following them. And number five, hit the share button, hit other, and then cancel. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up So we got a nice symmetrical triangle. We are waiting for the price to break that resistance. Once it does break, we're gonna enter and use that resistance as a new support. And you can see that resistance has been respected throughout the entire chart. And here we go, we're gonna enter and we entered. And here's our take profit at the previous support. And that's how you do it. Oh, that looks like an okay support. Oh, that's holding pretty well. Just waiting to get filled. Oh, I'm finally filled. Yes, it's gonna go awesome. Fuck. Spotting a good buy point check. Try to notice the similarities. Price respecting a descending zone, making lower highs, connecting the lower highs. And once we see a break in the resistance, we get a push up. Got the same thing here. Got the descending trend line. Got a resistance that's been respected. Once we see a break in the resistance, we got a trend up. And right now we see another descending resistance and it's very well respected. We currently have the price poking out of the resistance. What do you think it's gonna do next? And that's basically trading. You look at historical patterns that have happened over time and you say, hmm, could it happen again? We're only telling you this because we care. Some more signs. Jeff Bezos just sold $2.8 billion worth of Amazon shares. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, sold roughly 54.7 million shares. Warren Buffett is not investing in stocks. His cash position is nearly 60% of his portfolio of public companies. Tim Cook has never sold shares of Apple before. Why are these people selling? We're saying this not because we're doom and gloomers. We're saying this because this is an opportunity.